Some exciting news coming from Softer because they have just launched their new Coda database connection. You can now build business apps, client portals, and internal tools directly on top of your Coda data with real-time two-way syncing. No more clunky embeds and no more duplicated docs. Just clean, secure interfaces your team or clients will love. In this video, I'll show you how to turn your Coda tables into beautiful branded portals and business apps in a matter of clicks. Hey there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com and we help companies get set up and automated using industry-leading portals, apps, and integrations. In today's video, we're diving into Softer's new Coda data source and why it opens up so many more possibilities for builders and businesses alike. Let's start off by jumping into Softer and looking at how you can connect your Coda data source to your Softer account. We'll notice in the left of the side panel where we keep all of our data sources. If you want to directly connect, well, you just select connect data source and then we'll see the Coda is now available. From here, we'll select it and it's a simple matter of jumping into Coda and collecting your API token. Jumping into Coda, we're currently in the dashboard. We're gonna select the avatar on the top right and from here, we'll jump into account settings, not admin settings. We're just gonna scroll down. We've got pixel... We should have API, here we go, generate API token. Let's give this a name, softer, and we'll generate that token. Copy it. Now, you don't want to share this with anyone else. Jump back into softer, paste it there, and continue. And we've now connected our coder to our softer. Likewise, we could just jump straight into a data source. Here we've got a purchase request form. And from here, if we select an element that we can connect, we'll notice the connect data source appear on the right. We'll select that bad boy. And again, we'll see Coda available. The same if you're starting with a brand new app build, we're just going to select start with the template. We are going to use the work management or the work order management. We'll use this template. And when we select, it'll come up with the option to add another data source or just select that already connected coder. Same process, you'll just continue through, add your personal API token, and you're away. Once connected, your coder data, your coder tables can now live within Softer. Any changes that you make in coder, well, that syncs directly to your Softer app. Coda is already a favorite tool for internal docs, wikis, and standard operating procedures, but what about external users? Let's say you're using Coda to store help docs, blog content, or even member data. With Softer, you can turn these into wikis and directories with search filters and categories, membership portals that restrict access based on user groups, and community dashboards where members can log in, access premium content, or even update their info. And the best part, you still only need one Coda doc to do this. Softer will handle the access, permissions, and conditional visibility. So your data stays organized, but more importantly, secure. Now let's look at one of the most common use cases and one of the most valuable, building secure branded portals for external collaborators like clients, vendors, partners, employees in other teams. Let's say you're part of the operations team at a growing company. You're already using Coda to internally track your vendor onboarding workflows, approvals, compliance docs, and internal requests. But as you scale, manually emailing updates or sharing filtered Coda docs, this becomes unsustainable and super chaotic. And that's where Softer comes in. With just a few clicks, you can create a partner operations portal that connects directly to your live Coda tables for each vendor or each partner. Let's not waste any time and jump into Coder and Softer and see what we can build for your business. So here we've got our company doc and within it, we've got our operations hub. This is the place where we keep track of our team wikis, SOPs, guides, team details, contact email, phone number of our employees, our requests, internal requests, think software, purchase requests, and so on, as well as our vendor tracking. Now, rather than bring our team into Coda, perhaps they're looking after their work in Jira, Monday, or another platform, rather than give them two work management tools, we can build a beautiful business app or portal that allows them to give us the details we need and keep everything on track. So we'll jump into our first template that we've used here, the purchase request form. So rather than just having a purchase request form, we want an internal request form for software, tech, and so on. 
But to connect the coded data source, we know that we've got in our operations hub, the request tracker. And that title there is request tracker. So we'll connect, we've got coder, the source connected, the document will be our operations hub and the table, well, that's going to be our request tracker. Now with that published, each time the form is completed, well, the request tracker on Coda is updated with the details. But we want to do much more than just build a form. We want to create an employee portal for our team to use, a place that they can easily access to make requests, view their current requests, update their details, docs, and so on. So here we have the employee portal that we've just quickly built. We want to add a page to it. Currently, we have home requests, which shows the list of their requests, as well as the details, getting into the granular details of each individual request, user details, and we're just going to quickly add a page here, which is going to be request form. So we'll save that. Now you might see some data already in our portal. That's just template data the software's provided. So you can easily see how each template looks. Now I'll make sure to leave in the description of this video, a link to each of these beautifully crafted templates we've been using in the video. But here we are on our form page, blank canvas. We want to add a form to it. So we'll search blocks form. We just want it to be a simple centered form, nothing special here. So we've added that form and now it's time for us to first connect to our request tracker because we are building a request tracking form, request tracker, and then we'll jump into the questions. Currently we're asking for the name, email, selection, but let's just get rid of this. Yep. We're just going to have a simple, we've got the requester, request ID department. Let's just include the description for the sake of this video. Email will keep date and time. Let's get rid of that. Add a field, which will be an input. And we'll just toggle that on. So rather than it being called description, we'll label it. What are you requesting? Pretty straightforward. And then we're also able to include a placeholder, just some explainer details. So we've set the questions, we've connected to our data source. Now, the cool thing with software is we can actually use conditional logic directly in our builder. Well, maybe you have multiple request forms for different teams. You can use conditional logic to change the flow and experience of the form, depending on which team member is filling it out. But continuing on, we've also got the ability to change the look and feel of your form and your pages. Software gives you a lot of options when it comes to branding your portal and your business app. And visibility, well, this refers to who is able to see the form. Now that's the great thing about software. You're able to configure and set your dashboards and apps so that each individual member sees a different app depending on what their permissions are. But continuing on, we will just quickly work through this. We've got our requests and our request tracker. We've just created the request form. We'll just move that down so it's all nice and organized. Now we can see in the request tracker that this is more so for those actually completing those requests, making them approved or rejected. Instead, we want the request page to be a view of the requests that the viewer has submitted. So rather than having the unassigned in progress and completed sections, Let's change this. We will first need to actually connect our request tracker. There we go. So that's been connected. And this will show us all of the requests. Here we can see Chloe Smith, Alice Nguyen. If we jump in, that data has automatically been synced there. So what we want to do is just decide what the viewer can actually see. So we've got the request type, all the details. That's all well and good. Yep, I'm a fan of that. The search bar, the placeholder. The filters, however, let's add a filter. And we want to filter by the requester. So rather than showing the requests of everyone, let's actually show the work that needs to be done. So we'll just delete this block here. And we're going to quickly add another block. We'll select, let's go with grid this time. Of course, we'll need to connect to one of our data sources. So we've got operations hub. Let's do the product roadmap the feature list, and straight away we can see those fields and that data has straight away automatically been mapped. From there, we then just have the ability to quickly change this to product 
And rather than giving everyone access to our coded doc so they can see everything that we're discussing in product, we need to keep that safe and secure. We're able to show a nice product map on the front end, but we can still have the viewers interact with this. Let's continue and take a look at connecting our team details. We can see that we've got our users here. And again, we've got some dummy data from that template. Let's just ensure that we are connecting to the correct source. Again, operations hub. And this time it's the team details table. And then we'll see that populate. And I don't believe we currently have any images. So it's just going to use some generic images like it did with the product roadmap. So now your employees get access to see the contact details of their team members, but perhaps they need to update their details. Well, again, we could just use the user details page and turn it into a form where they request to update their details. And we could redirect them to a page with a form that enables them to update their details. Now, I hope I didn't confuse you because I'm not referring to user permissions. I'm just referring to the user and user detail pages that we have on this working management template. So let's take a look at what those permissions are like. Now, if we select publish, we'll ensure that it's published and head to the live view and look at how we've used our coded data to build a beautiful portal for our team. Now, because we're on the live version, we will be prompted to enter an email and our password. So let's make things easier and jump in from the preview. And there we can see the data from our coder workspace. And of course, selecting someone with the right permissions, we can see we now have access to our coded data, but we don't have access to changing that data in the doc. Instead, we've built a beautiful front end for all that important info. So if you're already using Coda to manage your business, your team, clients, or vendors, this new data connection makes Softer the perfect companion. No more embeds, no more clunky hidden views, and no more lost data. With Softer, you're able to build apps that your business and teams will love to use. If you haven't tried Softer yet, make sure you do. Check out the link in the description below where you can get started completely free and begin using your Coda data to build beautiful business apps that your teams and clients love.